come up here and land it though? This was the, uh, the this is just the decorative crazy game. Lit or not lit? This is very lit. confusing to lit. Lit? Okay, yeah. Right, candles lit, wax is down. Yeah, let's get you a new one. Yeah, you turn one.
Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. Amen. As for me, I will be on the watch for the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Do not rejoice over me, any enemy of mine. Though I fall, I will rise. Though I live in darkness, the Lord is a light for me. Holy One, whose coming we await, you invite us into the light of your presence. Illumine the dim places of our hearts. We are thirsty for your compassion. Draw near to us and fill us, that we may pour out your goodness to all who hunger. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day, we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now, may God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees, as soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of love, who leads us into life, creator, savior, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated.
Well, nothing says welcome to Advent and a new church year like our readings, especially Luke's gospel this morning, shaking us awake with Jesus' talk of the end of the world. Yes, Advent brings us squarely in orbit with apocalyptic Jesus, calling us to pay attention to a dying planet and its distressed peoples, to the disturbing chorus of sun, moon, stars, seas, and storm clouds. And yes, to glimpse the green wisdom of the fig tree in this parable that's tucked in upon, uh, alongside all of those ominous images. And the fig just might be a simple ingredient for an Advent recipe that helps us prepare fruitfully for the Son of Man's coming. That is, after all, our call in Advent, to be awake, to be ready, to welcome God at his coming. Now, fig trees take me back to pandemic times when I lived in Atlanta. On Fridays, I would go hiking in the Blue Ridge Mountains, and those were especially crisp those days of Advent. The trees were leafless, allowing you to see for miles from those ridges. On the way, on the highway that I took, I would go past Jaymore Farm, a family-run establishment that sold seasonal produce, homemade pies and jams, and an impressive array of propagated plants in those plastic buckets right there in the parking lot. Japanese maple, hydrangea, honeysuckle, my city balcony already was crowded as Bethlehem on Christmas Eve, but it was hard for me to resist taking another plant baby home with me, especially that day that I spotted the small brown turkey fig. If you've seen this common fig variety, you know those leaves are quite winsome and irresistible. And in that season, I needed a symbol of hope like that. It was the days where gamers were loaning their computing capacity to help scientists study the structure and behavior of the COVID-19 virus the days before we had a vaccine. And I sat there meditating day by day on this little fig, wintering in my kitchen. Yes, today's Advent readings have me thinking back to the lessons that that brown turkey fig taught me, because here we are one more time, peering into a future with at least confusing signs on our horizon. And this is also a time, with everything going on around us, when we can choose to grow our faith. If you did any feasting over the weekend, you know that what we feed tends to grow. And I'm not just talking about my waistline. This is, after all, Jesus' call tucked into this parable about the fig tree and its green leaves. And so, yes, I want to propose a simple recipe, Advent fruitfulness in five, perhaps not easy steps, but maybe they would be simple if we try them. Step one, focus on what is alive. There's so much temptation to pay attention in our day to what is dying all around us. But Jesus, with these words, wants us to pay attention to signs of growth. Leaves on all the trees, especially this time of year, offer us glimpses of living processes that persist, even in winter. Spring and summer, it's easier to notice. The ficus carica, or common fig, develops new leaves in the spring and summer about every four weeks. Four weeks. Funny, that's the same time we have in Advent. What has grown in you in the last four weeks? Luke's gospel seems awash in fear and foreboding. People are fainting, he says. Maybe not so unlike our contemporary moment and I'm not just talking about braving the crowds on Black Friday. Whenever fear shows up, it usually has something to tell us. I'm not fond of nourishing my fear, but I have been learning 
to listen to it. I wonder where you've felt afraid lately and what that feeling was asking you to notice. Resisting our fear actually unplugs us from the present moment, the present, that place where God's spirit always dwells with us. And when we listen to Jesus' words this morning in this gospel, we can start to remember that the Holy One never has been undone by humanity's chaotic ways, nor by the cataclysmic cycles of the earth. No, she is the original midwife who hovers over the face of the deep with great devotion ever since the dawn of creation, seeing all those possibilities that yet might be because of love's power working in us. Jesus points us to those unfolding miracles in spaces that are charged with risk and possibility. Jesus dares us to see love's presence, even there, revealing itself in divine goodness. I wonder, could you make daily prayer a practice of noticing what is alive in you and around you during these next four weeks of Advent? Greenness, after all, signals God's presence. It points us to the hidden power that fuels all growth in the universe. Step two in our recipe for Advent fruitfulness, linger in sunlight. That one's trickier this time of year, and if, like me, you dread the seasonal dance with dark arriving earlier and earlier each day, at least for a few more weeks, you're in good company. We are walking toward that winter solstice when longer days will return again. Yet even here, Christ's light coaxes us onward. I wonder when was the last time you lingered in Jesus' presence? Quiet time can be scarce amid the holiday rush, and yet love's light wants to warm our souls. Who helps you turn toward that light? Like a body relaxing in the sun's gentle rays, like the ones we had yesterday afternoon, could you linger in love's presence a little while this Advent? Maybe you get out into those great outdoors. Maybe you hang over a steaming bowl of soup or hot tea. Maybe you snuggle under a blanket with a slumbering newborn. These forms of surrender, simple though they may be, open us to love in miraculous ways, giving us everything we need to grow. Our next step in the recipe confirms Humanity's innate need for balance, like our plant friends, we too need to ensure our soil drains well. Yes, that's step three. Well-drained soil means your plant won't suffocate because root rot can kill your fig tree. If anybody is like me, you've done this to some plant babies that you've brought home. Maybe you too are awash in some things that could be blocking your ability to soak up what you really need. I see this in my life when I let my no go by the wayside, even though I know I'm oversaturated with activities, and that's when soul-rotting conditions can take over. Sufficient space, you know, having our soil a little looser and less densely packed, it can really allow our spirit to sift and sort all that is all around us so we can discern what needs to be let go so that we can decide what is really essential. When my spiritual soil returns to a healthy balance, my capacity to name and honor needed limitations gets restored. Advent is a season ripe for such recalibration Practices that bring greater balance, after all, return us to the source of goodness who inspires us to use precious resources 
in ways that are just and equitable. Fruitful outcomes often flow from such pruning, whether we're looking at our lives and trying on a new practice of generosity or trading out some lesser activity for a more uplifting spiritual practice. I recommend walking in the rain. Yes, step three means we do need to tend our soil to ensure it's drained enough for our thriving. But step four reminds us to mind our pace. Go slowly. Spiritual growth doesn't happen overnight. We need enough leaves to continue photosynthesis or else producing fruit will be impossible. I've had plenty of plants that had manifested that real risk of leaf drop when the plant gets sh shocked by rapid change. That can happen to us too. And these Advent weeks don't have to feel frantic, fitful, or charged by fear. We can let our hearts warm slowly in the presence of the Savior, whose love already is drawing near. We had that reminder at the 8 o'clock this morning when a new infant was baptized in our community. And those little ones remind us everything in life that involves growth happens incrementally, step by step. It's important to be patient with ourselves and with one another if we want to see the fruit that is growing here in community. A recipe for Advent would be incomplete if we forgot step five's important admonition. Beware those pests. Figs fall prey to certain kinds of insects. Scale insects look a lot like fungus. It can turn your leaves brown and weird looking. And then there are the spider mites who leave fine silk-like threads along the leaves. Anytime those pests come around, watch out. Better waste no time. A natural pesticide can be helpful. In our lives, certain spiritual energies are a lot like pests that need to be resisted. We heard prayer spoken about in our reading from Thessalonians and also there at the end of Luke's Gospel, and that kind of bringing before God our need for healing, for transformation, it is a gentle remedy. Night or day, being alert in prayer protects our souls as we bring before God whatever may be lacking in our faith. I wonder where you might be vulnerable to forces that threaten your fruitfulness this year. Maybe you're being invited to sidestep some of those habits that can turn your plant toxic. Maybe strengthening your connection with the Holy Spirit who dwells within and protects you from every force that draws you from the love of God. Maybe that's your path this Advent. The ficus carica might be less obvious than a brown turkey in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. But Jesus points to the plant's humble leaves as signs of a fruitful path of Advent preparation. Faith can grow whenever we focus on what is alive, whenever we linger in the sunlight, whenever we take steps to ensure our soil drains well. As we go slowly amid the vast changes in our world, and yes, as we watch out for pests. Maybe this reflection has been entirely too corny for your taste. Even so, in the coming weeks, may the Spirit awaken us, may Christ strengthen our hearts, may God increase our love for one another and for all. In the name of the love that is coming to save us. Amen.
standing as we are able, let us confess the mystery of faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshiped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops, all the clergy and people, especially the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan in the Anglican Communion, and St. John's Lakeport in the Diocese of California, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have requested the prayers of the St. Paul's community, especially George Drummy, Sophia Finnegan, Aidan Sanchez, Chris Schachtel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Burlingame, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, for the wisdom and the will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the aged and the infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, 
and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Arnold Emmett Akers, Benigno Norumbaba, and Tenio Tenev, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression and degradation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Paul and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, Lord our, God. our God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you, opposing your will in our lives. We, we have, have denied your goodness in each other, in, in ourselves, and, and in the world you have created. We, we repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the, and the evil done, done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the God of peace make you whole and holy, ever ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of Christ be always with you. Let us share with one another God's peace. Good morning. Blessed Advent to you. Welcome to all of you who have been away for a while and those who are visiting for the first time. We are so grateful to have you here to be celebrating God's coming among us and preparing with great expectation and hope for the celebration of his first coming at Bethlehem in tenderness and vulnerability. Tish has an announcement for us. We've got a couple of things that are listed in our uh, insert with the service leaflet. Lots of activities for the seasons of Advent and Christmas, so I commend those to your attention. And Tish, take it away. Thank you, Reverend Sarah. St. Paul's Giving Tree is back. We opened last week. We have a long tradition at St. Paul's of helping under-resourced families throughout our community on the peninsula. In fact, over the years, we have helped 175 families including six families this year, consisting of 25 people and 17 children. That's for those of you who like statistics. They are a cross-section of all of us at St. Paul's and all who live in our community, with perhaps one major difference. Each day, they have to make critical decisions regarding the rent, the food, and health care, because they do not have enough resources to cover all of them 
let alone clothe their children and give their children the things that all children desire. Christmas, for many of them, is a time of anticipation, just like it is for us. But it is a different kind of anticipation for those parents. The anticipation of, will they have enough to feed their children? Will they be able to respond to the hopes and dreams of their children, who, like children everywhere, have special wishes and wants for Christmas? That's where we help. This year, as I said, six families, 25 people, 17 children ranging from a three-week-old to a 17-and-a-half-year-old. These children have wishes and dreams, like our children, or friends' children have wishes and dreams. How can we help? Concretely, in several different ways. First of all, as I said, the Giving Tree is back. You'll find it in Foot Hall during hospitality after the 10 o'clock service. There are food tags to choose or gift tags from the tree to sign up for and bring back next Sunday or the following Sunday. There's also an opportunity to be part of St. Paul's community on some Sunday, December 22nd, if you're in town because that's the day it all comes together. When the food is sorted from bags and bags of people's gener generous donations and then put into bags for the families that we're helping. It's the day when we wrap the dozens of presents from the gift tags that have been chosen from the tree and then all of those are delivered to our families with love, compassion, and understanding. So if you'd like to help, please join me today at Hospitality. You'll see our tree, and I'd be happy to help you with tags, with any questions that you may have, and certainly to tell you about any of the opportunities to help on Sunday, December 22nd. Thank you. Thank you, Tish. Thanks to Lincoln for lighting our Advent candle on the wreath this morning. And I know Lincoln and Livy, who are working with our children this year as they prepare to tell the story of Jesus' birth for the pageant on Christmas Eve, they are still looking for adult support. You can read about that in the announcements. And thank you, Lincoln, for your leadership year by year in helping bring to life this story of love and joy and peace for all people in the hearts and imaginations of our little ones and then bringing that back as a gift to all of us. We are so grateful for your leadership among us. As we turn our hearts to the table where God's love nourishes us week by week, we know that all of us are welcome. We are fueled and we are fed to share and to multiply God's love in so many ways, everywhere we live and move and have our being. So know that all are welcome. There's no wrong way to do it. Um, we are, we have gluten-free bread if you need it. We have real wine in the cup. If, and if for any reason you prefer, you can cross your arms over your chest and receive a prayer of blessing. But however you come, know that love is drawing very near. And God's heart of love for you is a gift that you can turn to any moment of the day. So let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice for the whole world.
It is a right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious creator, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Jesus' life, death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
The table is ready. So come, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come, because it is Christ who invites us to meet God here.
standing as we are able in body, mind, or spirit, let us pray. Gracious God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have set before us a great hope that your kingdom will come on earth. You have taught us to pray for its coming. Make us ready to thank you for the signs of its dawning and to work as we wait for that perfect day when your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. And as we await Christ's coming in glory, may the eternal God enfold us with love, fill us with peace, and lead us in hope. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Thank you.